that's in motion. How's it going, Exiles? My name is Ralph, and today I wanted to talk about the most overpowered uniques, in my opinion, as of 2.2 patch, as of Ascendancy. Now, in general, from a sort of design and sort of a function in-game, uniques serve as an item where you can get a unique power. Usually, then, they will have a unique downside on them, or the downside will just be the fact that you're not wearing a rare item in its place, that you're not wearing, you know, a juicy life tri-res item where you could be wearing that. Instead, you're wearing a unique. Usually, that's the downside. And some uniques, the downside doesn't exactly overcome the unique power, the upside. So, starting off, one of the uniques I believe most obscenely overpowered is Voltaxic Rift. 100% of your lightning damage converted to chaos. And your chaos damage can shock. So just in case you are playing crit or you, you know, you're know you inflicting the status ailments a lot, just in case you thought you were going to lose your precious shock, you know, which is going to make him still take damage and then take the chaos damage, no. And, okay, okay, but, but who cares? It's chaos damage, right? This is stupid. If you're playing any spellcaster who does lightning damage, you may as well just use Voltaxic Rift. I think your build would be better. It would probably be better in most cases. And of course, if you're using a bow and you're scaling, you know, weapon elemental damage, which is pretty easy, and you could still even scale crit with it, even though it has a lower base, especially with things like the assassin tree and the base crit and all that now, it, it, the item is just stupid. So. What it does, the 100% of lightning to chaos damage, is ridiculously OP, because chaos damage is very scarcely resisted by enemy mobs, as in, enemy monsters don't have a lot of chaos resist, so, and if you roll map mods, oh, enemies have this resistance, chaos damage doesn't matter, or monsters reflect this much physical damage, chaos damage doesn't matter, Monsters reflect this much elemental damage. Chaos doesn't matter, because chaos isn't elemental damage. And one of the absolute best ways to build a map pool is to just be able to neglect map mods, to just be able to run as many map mods as possible. Because then you can just spend such a small amount of currency rolling them, because when you can do just about any map mod and you don't need to spam chaos to get that one specific pack size map with 100% quantity that you can actually do, it you, you only need to use a couple chaos because chaos damage allows you to do anything. And chaos damage should be probably a little more scarce than just all of your lightning to it on one item. But you could be like, and sure it can't roll as high DPS as some rare bows, but it doesn't even matter. And you can still shock. And you can still shock. Voltaxic Rift is so broken. I mean, and it's, it's not even that expensive. It's not expensive. If it was, like, as rare as, you know, Headhunter, I would be like, oh, it's not that overpowered because it's so, it's hard to get. But it's very cheap. And, you know, you think about something like Consuming Dark, you need two Consuming Darks now to get the full conversion to Chaos. Full Taxic Rift, nope, just one item. There you go. And as you've seen with the meta, it makes things pretty easy for a lot of builds, more than just basic bow builds, too. Voltaxic is stupidly broken, you don't have to worry about Reflect ever, and it's just crazy OP, OP getting the easy amounts of Chaos damage, so that's my first overpowered unique item. And the downside of Voltaxic is just what? That it just isn't a perfect rolled rare? <laughs> and it's, it's hard to find, not kind of? Yeah, so, alright, moving on. We got, this one's obvious, I had to include it just to talk about it, Skyforth. Alright, now Skyforth. So, let's look at the downsides. Well, it's got an ES base, so if you're playing a CI character or something like that, you know, it's kind of got a low ES, so maybe that's not good enough for you. And, you can't regenerate life. Oh no, I know all my ES builds rely on life regeneration. Okay, so that's a... Uh, pretty iffy downside. Stun is based off 5% of your ma mana. Not max mana, but still, mana. So that solves a problem of CI getting stunned all the time. It's okay. Reduced mana reserve. 
All right. Uh, okay. I mean, I guess it could have had that on there. That's pretty cool, I guess, if you need that extra reserve, you know, to have your auras working properly and to have just enough to use your skill. But then, 25% chance to get power charge on crit, which is just so amazing. Power, Because power charges are pretty much the hardest charge to gain, to generate, and they give, you know, the crit and all that. So if you were going to play a, a CI spellcaster, basically just having uh, Skyforth would make you able to go crit extremely easily just by generating power charges and being able to ramp up your crit chance naturally. That's probably the stupidest overpowered affix on the item is the... The chance to get power charges, but I know other people could could argue, and it gives a crap load of base mana and the mana stun effect. Also, it just had to have 30% movement speed, because, you know, then they wouldn't be good boots. However, Skyforth is so rare, and it's so hard to find, that it's hard for me to say that it is stupidly overpowered. But let's be real, the downsides for it not having, you know, juicy resists and perfect ES amount... Uh, aren't too great, and no life regen isn't really a downside. It just means it can't work with one build, and you really could just do Vol Pact anyway. So, yeah, Skyforth, you just had to throw it on there. Now, this one, oh man, I don't know. This one, some could disagree. Lightning Coil, oh yeah. So, Lightning Coil got the armor evasion base, whatever. And then, you know, you have minus lightning resist, okay, whatever, some lightning damage to attacks, but the minus lightning resist, that's quite an intense downside, you know, rare chest pieces, my chest piece is supposed to give me resist, uh, lightning coil also has life, which it probably doesn't even need, but it has it anyway, in a pretty good amount, considering the extremely ridiculous overpowered last effect, 30% of physical damage taken as lightning damage. So, if you were going to take a physical hit that was a thousand damage, nope, it's actually going to be 700 damage as physical, and that extra 300 that got kicked off is going to be mitigated by your lightning resist. And if you know anything about armor calculations, chunking off just a huge portion of the hit like that is extremely overpowered for damage mitigation. If you know if the like how armor works mathematically, it is extremely ridiculously overpowered. The reason I would say lightning coil is most overpowered, well one it's, it's not that rare of an item, so, you know, it's pretty accessible, which makes it pretty overpowered. But also, it is so hard to roll a rare chest piece, a, roll, a rare evasion chest piece that is better for lightning coil. Even, you know, if you're playing an acrobatics character, if you're using dodge and you have evasion and you're not getting hit by, hit by physical hits a lot, usually you want to have enough HP or mitigation to prepare for that one big hit that isn't going to get evaded or dodged. And lightning coil just covers that all by itself. And it has life on it. The amount of lightning resist you lose, yes, it's important, but, I mean, is that really a downside next to that amazing overpowered mechanic on there? It's debatable. It's debatable if it's really, like, a worthy downside. And moving on to uh, lightning, lightning Coil's uh, nephew, got the little, the little drinky flask there, the Taste of Hate. Yes, it was nerfed, but it's still overpowered, and I'm calling these things overpowered because they could be nerfed even more and they would still be good items. Like, Voltaxa could have a 10% less damage on it and it would still be a good item. But on to Taste of Hate. Taste of Hate has the same effect as Lightning Coil, except for in the form of a flask. And if you're using a flask, you know, you could use a granite or you could use a basalt. But... Uh, Taste of Hate, if you're playing a Fizz build, is also just going to give you damage. Because if you're playing Fizz build, you get the extra cold, and you get some freeze avoidance. I mean, is this going to be give as much physical mitigation as the best rolled Granite Flask on the best rolled... You know, maybe not, but still. And it gives you max cold res, so you're going to get even that more extra mitigation. Taste of Hate is ridiculously overpowered. And I mean, if you have Lightning Coil and Taste of Hate, then it's just stupid together. Is Taste of Hate extremely ridiculous, like, oh, every build needs it? No, but would a lot of builds like to have it? Probably. The only reason they don't is because it's rare enough. 
and uh, I, I mean, that that is what it is. Rarity, schmarity, it, it kind of, mm, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think Taste of Hate, it barely makes the list, but I'm, I'm saying it's overpowered because it's, it's, I had to put a flask on the list, and that flask, it, it's definitely, it's overpowered, for sure. It's, it's overpowered in its own way. Moving on, Hegemony's Era. Oh, man, this thing is overpowered, and not necessarily for the item itself. You get the extra charge, you know, it has great attack speed, it has good attack speed, it has nice crit value on it, it has a decent fizz damage, the DPS on this staff is definitely not as high as you could get on a rare staff, and it allows you a way to get some power charge regeneration. Okay, well then why is it so overpowered? It's not necessarily Hegemony's Era's fault that this is overpowered, but... The, the the real problem is within staves themselves. Like, it would be so hard to roll a rare staff that was as good or, you know, decent, useful for making a build as Hegemony's. Because the amount of crit you get, the power charge, the generation of power charges you can get, you know, from things like, with things like knockback and all that, then... It's so hard to roll a staff because the staff just will get spell damage and lightning damage to spells and all this stupid stuff you don't need. Hegemony's Arrow's just like, come on, I got it all for you already. I got the crit, I got the attack speed, fizz damage, you can scale power charges. Easy, easy. And Hegemony's isn't even that expensive. It's like an exalt right now. So what's the point? Rares just have no point. The downside of Hegemony's, looking at the item, there is no, like oh, you're stupid now, or your movement speed doesn't exist. Like, there's no, like, you're dumb, there's no insults on the item. Like, it's just only good things. So the downside is that it takes up an item slot, right? The downside of the unique is that it you're, it's not a rare. And getting a rare that's more useful than Hegemony's is just like, what? How are you gonna, how are you gonna get a rare that's better than Hegemony's? I mean, I love the item, and I think it's really overpowered, but I love, I mean, I like it. It's cool, and I'd, I'd like to make a build with it. Now, the last, well, not quite the last, but item is Headhunter Belt. Yes, Headhunter Belt. I included it, even though it is extremely rare and hard to come by. I mean, it's kind of made a comeback here in Parandus League, people buying it with the coin money. Thank you, Kadiro. But... Still, take a look at this thing. So it has to it has enough life. It has enough life to be as good as a rare belt. Well, you think to yourself, but rare belts, you know, we that's where we get our resists and our wed, and we need stuff like that. Well, okay, it gives you insane dex and insane strength. So to be fair, if you're playing an attack based build and you know you struggle to get either of those stats, you cover the stats, and you need to cover those stats somewhere in the talent tree or jewelry or something like that. Usually. So it covers stats. Imagine if you're a caster. Usually if you're a caster, you're gonna get a lot of int pretty easily, or if you're playing by the witch area, a witch with headhunter, well there goes your stat requirement problems because that is an insane amount of stats and you just get it like that, easy peasy, this thing is broken. You get the damage to rares because rares are one of the few things that cause you to have to stop for half a second in the game of Path of Excel. You know, it's just killing packs of monsters just isn't fast enough because those stupid guys that glow yellow, you just can't kill them quick enough so you get some damage to the rares. And the rares will sometimes have haste Aura or Soul Eater or all this other stupid stuff and then you get to steal one of those mods and you can get extra life and all this crazy stuff. Headhunter is so broken. PoE is very much a clear speeds game right now. You know, if you want to grind the XP, if you want to go fast, go fast, go fast, get them levels. And Headhunter is ridiculous for that. It, it you, you kill rares and you, you find the next one, you find the next one, you find the next one, and you just chain them and you get their crazy powerful buffs and you just run, you just go ham. You just go ham on the map. It's crazy. Roll that with Nemesis mod and you're good. You're good to go. Not much else to say about Headhunter. It's super rare, but it is sure broken. Now, the last most overpowered unique item in the game, the Goddess Unleashed. Well, no, no, the Goddess Unleashed is not overpowered, but I wish it was. It's kind of a shame. Wh whatever. The Goddess Unleashed is not overpowered. It's not on the list. That was a joke. That was a joke. But honorable mentions for overpoweredness, I would say Void Battery. Void Battery is 
rare. It's hard to come by. And, you know, it kind of only enables one way to play. It's just like, oh, stack power charges. But I have to include it just because if you stack 10 power charges, you know, like with the occultist tree, and you dual wield void batteries, I just keep thinking about this. It's like, oh, you have min one, minus 160 spell damage, and then you have 25 additional spell damage, 25 additional spell damage per power charge, 10 power charges, 500% additional spell damage, so then 340% additional spell damage from two wands and the cast speed. I just had to include void battery just because I was like, what? And I never see void battery anymore. No one ever talks about it. I'm like, that thing's so cool. Someone, you know, like make the void battery come back. It's so awesome. I mean, I know they're, hard. they're, they're expensive. That's why. And they're rare. And it's really not that exciting. You just build power chargers and it's good. And the last honorable mention for overpowered uniques, I would say I just put this one on because is at Series Flask, the Series Promise, just because it serves as a life flask in the way that it gives you leech and it gives you extra damage, and the extra damage can allow it's it's chaos damage. It's not that it is ridiculously broken and it should be nerfed like the other ones. This is why it's an honorable mention, but it is still quite good in that. Almost any build can get really great use out of it, Series Flask. It's, it'll act as a life flask, and it gives you extra damage, and a lot of the time you'll just have extra life flasks. If, you know, it had remove bleed on use, then it would be ridiculously overpowered. But, yeah, it's not quite. I wouldn't say you could nerf it. But a lot of the uniques on the list, a lot of the uniques on the list, especially the more rare ones, you don't need to nerf because they are so hard to get. But, you know, some of the ones like Hegemonies, Voltaxic, and Lightning Coil, those ones, they're easy to come by, and the effects they give are quite amazing. But yet I don't want them to nerf Hegemonies, because I think it's so cool. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, that's my list of OP unique items as of 2.2, as of Ascendancy, as nerfs and buffs and all this have come along. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if uh, I list any, if I mean, if I missed any unique items from the list in your opinion or whatever. Discuss the unique items that I talked about here. Let me know what you guys think, and thanks for watching.